Jeff Greco with Legacy Capital. Doug Faith, also with Legacy Capital. And uh, today we're going to be talking about market cycles and really where this came from was from client interviews that we did uh, at the end of last year. Just uh, one, trying to understand ways that we can add more value to our clients, also understand what are some of their you know, concerns. And uh, a common consensus that came up in those interviews is just you know, where are we at in, in the market cycle and specifically concerns about a correction coming and, and what can that look like. And I think certainly in the aftermath of 2008, um, that's kind of where people go when they think about uh, you know, market corrections. And certainly we're not uh, experts at, or no one knows the future, right? So, so, so we don't know where we are, but there are certain things that you can look at um, and identify and, and sort of what came about is, you know, essentially that we're probably somewhere between here and here in the market cycle. And so sort of that, that next cycle is gonna be a correction or downward cycle. Um, that was common consensus with uh, the clients that we spoke with and something as we look at our data um, that we feel as well. And, you know, the question is, how long does that take? Is that a month, a year, three years? Who knows, right? But it, it begged the question, you know, what are some of the things that you can start doing in your business where if you feel this is where we're at and a market correction is coming next, what are some of the things that you can do to prepare for your business? So one, not only are you able to sort of navigate that next market cycle, but to be able to thrive and be able to use that as a buying opportunity uh, in your business. Yeah, and so if we look at this beautifully drawn curve, again by me, right, <laughs> it represents prices. And so we could, if we look back, you know, roughly about every 10 years or so, there's some sort of major or uh, not so minor correction that happens. And so as Doug was saying, right, 2007, 2008 was really the last, you know, major correction that, that happened. And so just mapping on some years, uh, right before the market fell out, we were really at the top of, of the cycle. And so if we would map that on to now, as Doug was saying, right, so prices are getting higher right now in the market uh, in 2018. Are they at uh, the very top of the market? Do they still have some room to appreciate? Um, we're not uh, magicians. We don't know uh, exactly when, uh, but we really wanted to create this video because um, in our annual interviews with our clients, one of them, or excuse me, many of them were trying to understand, hey, what should I be thinking about? I may not know exactly when some sort of correction is happening, but what are some things I could do now uh, to plan for when you know, the market corrects? And just to give you uh, a little context, so my entry into the real estate investing business uh, was really out of the 2007 market collapse. Um, so I was buying delinquent mortgages from banks and hedge funds. Um, so just to map this onto a strategy I use, um, is that right? prices were at the top, people were getting mortgages, 100 plus percent financing, probably shouldn't have been qualified for those mortgages. And you know because the economy changed, market prices dropped, a lot of people weren't able to continue to make their mortgage payment. And so um, I was buying uh, debt backed by real estate. Uh, I didn't know if I was buying it at the very bottom, but I felt confident that I certainly wasn't buying it at the top. And so um, what we wanted to talk about were just a couple of different strategies um, because it's our belief that there's no good or bad time in the market. Really, it's a question of how do you use a strategy that's appropriate for where the market cycle is. And so a couple things to keep in mind. So um, obviously when market prices are low or real estate's on sale, you want to buy, 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 right? We're not in that time right now, but um, you know maybe when the next correction happens, if it's big enough, or certainly in 2008, really until now, um, there's been a significant amount of buying opportunities, and so um, uh, price appreciation has happened considerably. The question is, as we get to kind of this cap or top of the dome here before uh, prices start to go down again, what are some things not knowing specifically when they're going to change or when they're going to stabilize? And so um, one of the things that we're believers in is that uh, cash almost always is king. And so how do, in one of the previous videos, we talked about having 
reserves or having a strong business. So what will happen at the top of a market or as things start to correct, right? And so if you're a fix and flipper, um, what may end up happening is that mortgage rates may rise and or uh, your people that you're looking to sell your newly rehabbed house to may not be qualified or those same refinance programs may not be available before. So your rehab time to rehab a house may stay consistent at you know 90 days for instance, but rather than you exiting in one month, two months, or three months, you may have to hold on to that property to find a buyer who is, in today's stand, what would be super qualified um, to be able to sell your house. Um, if, or you also may have to sell at a lower price, right? Because if you catch it here and it starts to go down, um, you know, maybe you thought you were going to get 300 grand for it and maybe now you got to be at 290 or 280. Um, so again, something to keep in mind, and this is one of the things that came through with the clients that we spoke about is just that mindset of being conservative, right? So look, things right now, the market's good, properties are selling, you have the right product, it sells like that, right? Inventory is at an all time low. But you wanna, again, think a step further, when that changes, what are some of the things that you can do now with your buying decisions that will put you in a position where if you do get caught sort of in this first phase here that you can exit even if you need to lower your price and you're still walking away with profitable deals. Right, so as Doug was mentioning, having the financial stability, whether you need to sell it at a lower price um, and not being into a deal, whether it be for purchase price or your rehab amount, so that if you don't sell it for that 300 number, you're still making money or able to exit a deal. Um, really having money uh, to buy new uh, assets or to potentially withhold or stay in assets longer that you may need to keep financing or holding costs uh, going. So certainly having liquidity um, for you, not only your business expenses, but also your holding and your debt expenses of real estate, uh, as well as potentially building up your war chest like Mr. Buffett for when things do go on sale again, uh, being able to ready uh, to buy things at a, at a significant discount. And one other thing to, to keep in mind as well, even if your business is solely focused on flipping, you do also want to consider what is the rentability of that property and would that produce cash flow for you. So in the example of if you get caught where prices are going down and instead of getting 300, you really need to sell it at 280, maybe you don't want to sell it at 280. Okay, well, what if you were to put a tenant in there um, and refinance into permanent financing, will that tenant pay your mortgage? Does it still leave you with cash flow? It just gives you another exit option so that maybe you're able to ride this out and you're making money every month or at minimum breaking even until the price goes where you want it to go and then you can sell. Yeah, so having multiple options, thinking about where we are in the cycle, uh, building up the reserves, having a strong foundation, uh, being able to manage if uh, prices are higher and you don't want to. And uh, we tell clients all the time, it, it's okay to let a deal go if it's not at the price that you want, right? Being diligent, um, there'll be another time. We don't wish this upon other people, but maybe people who are in the market driving the prices up are overpaying. And so if they're not in a strong position, maybe you will have an opportunity to buy their houses that they paid too much for, or they may have to sell uh, at a fire sale price. And so you can be an active buyer at that point, but just making sure that you're in a strong place, no matter what the market cycle is, uh, will help you be successful.